So hello everyone and welcome to this short video showing you how Tricentis Tosca can automate different AngularJS applications. This is not specific to just AngularJS, we can also use it for any other technologies that use similar AJAX, asynchronous types of controls that have that request and response. As a starting point I have Tricentis Tosca installed and I can use that to automate all my different technologies end to end. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to see how Tricentis Tosca can automate Google Maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I come to my standard module section here on the left, and I'm going to use Tosca to open the browser. So I'm going to grab this open URL browser, drag and drop it into my test case section, and I can rename that now to Automate Google Maps. Okay, so that's my test case, and I'm using a test step over here that says open URL which just references that module and I can say launch my browser which is my default in this case it's going to be Chrome and I'm going to navigate to googlemaps.com so let's run that and we can see Tosca get us to our starting point where we want to actually automate the actual searching and selecting of an item and that's where we'll see that angular JS behavior so if I jump to my results you can see Chrome has now been opened and we have a drop down list over here, sorry, a search box, which will, as I enter data in there, it'll have a drop down list. So if I said, for example, Jersey City, you can see all the different options that have opened up over here. So obviously we don't want to select every pop, we don't want to create a module with every possible result. We just want one module with one field, one drop down list selection, and we want to drive that in the test case using the business logic or data sheets, for example. So what we'll do is we'll come to our module section. I'm going to select a new folder and tell Tosca to create one. So for anything that doesn't exist, we create it ourselves using our scanner. And you'll see my desktop scanner is started and I can just select Chrome and select the different controls. So I'm going to double click my Chrome browser and that would work the same for all different browsers or all technologies. But if we automate this in Chrome, we can also run this in Edge, Firefox and IE as well with the same test. I'm going to say select on screen. You can use the drop down list as well if you want, or that to tick from that little selection. But I'm just going to grab the, the search box, and you can see it's recognized that as an edit box. And you can see all the different options that come back here divs and containers. So that might be a bit tricky, but in this case, what we'll see is we're going to use, for example, this div here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of them over there, but we just need to capture one, and then we can data drive that later, which we'll show you. So I'm going to rename the search box there to search, which is named as Q for some reason. And then the result over here, I can give it a generic name like result, result item, because I'm going to drive that in the test. So I only have one and I can use that over and over as many times, depending on what search result I put in there, I can click on the data that comes back. So now you can see it's orange, which means it's not unique. It's telling us that already. So we need to grab a property that makes it unique. So what in my experience, what we've seen is inner text is normally the cleanest property to use. Although it's not, doesn't mean you have to. If there's any other properties here like outer text, outer HTML or anything else, when you say load all properties, you can use them and it'll work exactly the same. And you can see here there's the data based on the search selection is what's being shown over there. So I can say, okay, let's leave it as it is. I'm going to save that module and now I can reuse that over and over to automate that search selection. There's my module called Google Maps and my search button and the item. So we need to do a little work here before we drag and drop it across because we want to make it dynamic. So the first thing we're going to do is come to the results. And here you can see there's the data that made it stable, Jersey City Medical Center, for example. So I'm going to go control C, cut it, and I'm going to replace that with our standard buffer function. So I'm going to say whatever I buffer, I can use that to drive the results. So I'm going to call it result as well, just to make it a bit easier over here. Call it result. And now we can buffer that in the test and then we can drive that depending on what we search for. The other thing we need to do is if we come to the search box here, Tosca by default will just dump the text in there when we automate. And that's a quick way just so that we reduce the runtime. But if you want a more user simulation, like every time you type a character, you want and the applications sort of asynchronously going and grabbing data in the back and automatically filling could be a search box could be a drop down list it'll work the same for both that's when it's useful to add this little steering parameter and it's called user simulation 
And what that does is it gives it a more human interaction to it. So I just call it true. And now when I interact with that field, it's going to go one character at the time. And then the application in particular, this one, Google Maps, will know that I'm actually searching for something and it can actually search dynamically as I'm typing each character, as opposed to just dumping all the text in there. So we've done that now and that's all we have to do. And now we can reuse this model over and over in our test. So I'm going to drag and drop it over here, drop it into my same test. If I click on that, you can see I've got my two test steps and we're going to do exactly what we did before manually, Jersey City. And then we have the result. In this case, we want to click on the result because that's what we would have done manually. Now, this is where it, instead of having the data in the module, we've pulled it out and we've replaced it with a buffer. So I need to set a buffer. So I come over here to my buffers, I say Tosca T-Box set buffer, drag that across, drop that in there and we move it up. So what we want to do now is we want to set a buffer called result. And I'm just going to go control V and paste everything I pulled out of the actual module into there. And now this will basically set the buffer to result and put that into the actual control at runtime. And now I can run that. But what I want to do first is jump back to Chrome and just reset the application. So I'm just going to remove all that and let Tosca enter that data and select the result for me with the automated test. So I'm going to now right click and say run my test and it should set the buffer dynamically at runtime and then enter the text and then select the result. And you should see the mouse move across, there we go, and it selects that and then zooms in as it would normally. But that means now we, know, we, we can use the same module not just for Jersey City, anything we want to enter in here, we can change it. So if I said, for example, New York, and you can see all the results come back. Let's say I want to select on New York University. If I click on that, you can see that's what it should go to if I do it manually. So we want to get Tosca to do that. What I'm going to do just to make my life a little easier, copy that text. Now I'll remove it from there. Come back to Tosca here and say, instead of that being my result, I want this to be my result. And one thing I noticed before, because I've done this once before, is there is an actual, there's no actual comma when you search for it. I'll show you that in a sec. And so we need to remove that comma. And here you can see New York over here. So you can see here if I said New York, that's the result that should come back over here. You know, at university, there wasn't a comma. So I just removed that to make it easier. So what I'm going to do is close it all down now and let Tosca run from the beginning. So it's going to open up the browser, it's going to set the buffer, that's the expected result based on the New York, and then it should click on that as well. So I right click there, I run that in Scratchbook. What we should now see is Tosca launch the browser, wait for the actual page to load, because that does take a few seconds. And then once it's loaded, Tosca will go off and enter the text in the actual search field. And there we go, it's got New York, and now we should see the mouse move across again and select New York University, and there we go. So now you can see exactly how Tosca can automate different AngularJS or Ajax behaviors. And if I jump back to my module, you can see it works exactly the same way. It sets the buffer at runtime to whatever the result should be. In this case, it's New York. It uses that to identify the result. And now this is a great stable way to actually automate drop-down lists, text boxes, anything like that, where you have that kind of behavior and it's still keeping the maintenance down to a low. This is all in the test, but this can be data-driven. You can use parameters. There's a number of ways to drive the actual input and the output here of the expected. So thanks for your time. Hope that was useful for you. Bye.